Hey guys, Chuck Quinton here, founder of rotaryswing.com. Those two swings that you saw at the beginning there probably look pretty different. Hopefully they do. One of them is my normal swing that you can learn on rotaryswing.com. And the other is my very feeble attempt to learn a one plane swing hitting two golf balls. <laughs> so clearly it's not gonna be an exact representation, but the reason I did it is because I've been getting a lot of questions, surprisingly, people asking me, what is the difference between a one plane golf swing and the rotary swing? And my answer is everything. There's really nothing similar. In fact, I can only think of one similarity, and that is that we're both hitting a ball with a stick. Outside of that, they couldn't be any more different. And so I wanna talk about some of those key differences today. You'll be able to see some of them in the video if you go back and play it through, but again, I certainly don't have a one plane swing and that was a really pathetic attempt at trying to make one, but I'm gonna talk about some of the key concepts that will help you understand the main differences. At setup, we'll start face on. I'm just gonna walk through these relatively quickly. In a one plane swing, you take a wide setup with no axis tilt. Rotary swing, you do the exact opposite. You take a neutral setup, go two inches outside of neutral with axis tilt. Axis tilt, I've talked about a ton of how it has a dramatic impact on swing plane and path. If you have no tilt at address, the tendency for most golfers is then to reverse pivot. So with a proper swing plane, obviously we have axis tilt and that's actually what shallows out the swing plane on the way down. You'll watch if I just add this movement, this lateral shift without my head moving forward in the downswing, watch what happens to my swing plane. I'm gonna do nothing but move my hips. Look at that, club drops down on plane. That's why axis tilt is such a critical part of the golf swing. So the wide stance also basically inhibits weight transfer so you stay really centered and you just kind of rotate like this and you take your body out of the golf swing in fact i would say that is the biggest difference is that one golf swing is a body dominated swing and the other golf swing is an arms dominated swing do you know which that is a critical point because one is going to severely limit the amount of power that you can produce and the other one is going to leave that pretty much unlimited so with from down the line the other thing that you're going to notice is that the weight is going to be more on the balls of the feet. And I've talked at great length of why this is a horrible idea. Obviously, this just feels horribly off balance. I'm having a hard time sitting here like this. Rotary swing takes all your joints and we try to keep them in neutral as much, best we can. Obviously, you've got to change from completely being in neutral. So we get our back of our knee over the center of our ankle so that the majority of our weight is bearing down through the center of my ankle to the middle of my foot. That is how our bodies are designed anatomically to bear load. So if you're out on the balls of your feet, you're just gonna be off balance all the time and you've got all this force wanting to pull you this way in top, on top of that and it makes it even harder to keep your balance. One of the hallmarks, once we start moving the golf club with the one plane swing, is the old start the lawnmower drill. You take your right arm and you pull it back like this. Rotary swing does the exact opposite. We keep that right arm straight as long as humanly possible. From face on, we create a very wide swing arc because width is completely free speed. If you want swing speed, you wanna make the widest swing within reason that you can for a bunch of different reasons. And I've talked about that at length, but width, the wider the arc is, the more time the club has to accelerate. And if during the back swing, when it doesn't really matter how fast the club's going, the width of the swing is forcing your body to turn. You can just pick the club up like this, but you haven't engaged any muscles in your body at all. With rotary swing, we wanna use the body, we wanna recruit as much muscle fiber as we can. So by keeping our arms straight, it forces us to turn. So the lawnmower drill is the last thing on earth that you would ever wanna do in a rotary swing. Because for every two degrees that you move your elbow behind center line, the center of your shoulder, or you kinda of use your shirt seam as a guide, your shoulder blade, your scapula, has to move up one degree. These are anatomically tied together. That's how we are allowed to run. But if you wanna engage your core and use your core to transfer energy to the club and your arms, then that scapula has to remain down. So the last thing you want is for your shoulder blade to be moving up. This doesn't look like a very powerful position because it's not. How many gymnasts you see on the parallel bars like this? None. 
We want to engage our lats, engage our core, and so for that to happen, our shoulder blades have to remain down, and that's engaging the core. So from there, we have this move, and then a really deep flat move, and then what, what the one plane swing is going to have you do is rotate your chest as hard as you can while you're throwing your arm across your chest. Again, the exact opposite of what rotary swing teaches. We're gonna never rotate our chest. Our chest is gonna get rotated by our core and our hips, but our shoulders, we never try and turn our shoulders because that's gonna cause you to cast the club. You're gonna to create too much rotational force, too much centripetal force too early in the swing. So if I start spinning my shoulders, the tendency, or the, the, the physics of it are gonna force the club to start to cast. That's the result of centripetal force by turning your shoulders too soon. The result of that is always going to be centrifugal force. So if you start spinning your shoulders, it's very difficult to not throw the club away and lose power. And that is a big difference between rotary swing and the one plane swing because power is unlimited with rotary swing. We're gonna create the massive amount of leverage using our legs, using the wrists, using everything that we have, physics available, biomechanics available to make the most powerful swing humanly possible.